Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm super happy to be sewing along with you the first bag of the Bag of the Month Club for 2023. It is by Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H. Dexter says hi everybody. Um, and this is it, the Happy Handbag. This is a beginner friendly pattern. Really, it is for all levels. Let me show you some of the amazing features of this bag. So first off, check out this amazing teardrop shape. It's got purse feet on the bottom. I uh, I have rounded connector or rounded uh, O-rings here. It can be done with D-rings or any connector you like. Uh, it's got the um, decorative connectors here. It is amazing for showing off a print or a vinyl. It would be amazing in all solids as well. In the pattern, she does do it with the double-sided straps. Um, and they're all connected in one piece. That is one thing I did differently as I like to put my straps on after the fact. So yes, definitely follow along in the pattern. If you do that in this video, I show you how I do it. Um, it has a two magnetic snap closure and seriously, look how big and wide it opens up. So we got uh, two slip pockets on one side and the decorative zipper pocket on the other. Again, I did these two as I do all of my lining, uh, lining pockets. I do them all the same in all of my bags. It's done pretty much the same, but slightly different in uh, the pattern. So it gives you two ways to doing it. Uh, the sides cinch in, they do get a memory for cinching in very quickly as I just finished making this and it's already remembering to uh, cinch itself in like so. Yeah, so great. Um, materials I use in this bag, I used, uh, all my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. Uh, currently right now she does have a kit for the January Bag of the Month Club um, hardware kit so you can order it that way or you can order it separately uh, this gorgeous print I got it's a batik that I got on my Indonesia trip it was just perfect for this bag uh, my uh, black vinyl here is from Galaxy Customs part of the Canuck line and then I just used some scraps of some quilting cotton that I had uh, for the lining uh, interfacing wise on all of my cotton pieces I used EB Fuse Light from Emmeline Bags on the bottom I have a I didn't do a bag base in this or a uh, false bottom I did put Decaville Heavy into the bottom and it is a foam stabilizer I use the pretty in pink so foam from Galaxy Customs again you can use like a bossel or or the, by any soft and stable or the Pell on Flex Foam that works too what else? What else? Um, it has a really, really unique construction, especially how this top is formed. You can see how you have kind of some of the exterior crossing over to the lining. Super fun to learn that technique. Um, yeah, and besides that, thank you so much, Samantha, for allowing me to do the video for your Bag of the Month Club thing. I have Dexter digging at my feet. You guys know how puppy is. Um, yeah, anyways, how about we get to making this bag? So we are going to need some number five zipper tape, four O-rings, a number five zipper pull, two magnetic snaps, four purse feet, rivets, foam stabilizer, your two aligning panels backed with your woven interfacing, your two handle pieces. Again, I'm doing my handles a little bit different in this your two main front panels and your two lining main panels, your base lining and exterior piece. I have my Decaville Heavy already fused to my exterior base piece, your two zipper pocket pieces, your slip pocket piece, two uh, exterior side pieces, two connector pieces, Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my straps off camera. Um, if you wanna do double colored straps, you can definitely do that. I have a, a class for that down below in the description. Okay, so what we wanna do is we are going to start assembling our exterior panels. You wanna make sure your first panel is facing a right side up with the print 
pointing towards the top. Take your bottom piece, match up your centers, and put these right sides together. I've gone ahead and marked my centers on all of my pieces so far, and this exterior piece, you want to make sure you also have the centers marked on the short sides. We're now going to go ahead and sew this together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Next, what we want to do is we want to press this seam open. I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape to help base that in place. You can also go ahead and give this a press if you aren't using a vinyl that will melt. So go ahead and open up that seam. And then next, we're going to take this to the machine and we are going to top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down both sides of the seam. So that is done, you're gonna go ahead and repeat with the other side, making sure once again that your uh, directional fabric is going the right way. All right, I've gone ahead and I've put my foam onto my pieces. So again, use your uh, pattern piece to have the foam cut out of the very top sections of both of our main panels and our bottom panels. Um, I've done that here with our main panel that we have finished. And just make sure that my foam isn't flopping everywhere. I'm just going to put a little bit of double-sided tape right in here just to help hold that in place so it doesn't flop out of the way. Again, that's completely optional. Now that that's done, we're going to take our two connector pieces. And what we want to do is draw a center line down one of the connector pieces. You'll do the same with the other one. You can use clips here. I'm going to go ahead and use some double-sided tape. What we're going to do is fold these long edges into that center line, creating a one inch connector. Once that is done, we want to take a marking pen or some chalk and on the wrong side, one and a half inches down from each of the short ends, we want to make a mark. Okay, in the pattern, it says you can use a little bit of glue here, but I'm going to use a little bit of double sided tape and put it onto the short ends. And then we're going to take our o-ring and bring it down to that one and a half inch line there and we are going to fold this wrong sides together over top of that o-ring and you are going to do the exact same thing with the opposite side and a another o-ring go ahead and repeat this with the other connector piece once you have both done you want to go ahead and make sure that they're the same length which mine are and we want to kind of fold them in half like this, match them up, and mark with an erasable pen our center marks of these connectors. Okay, and then on the wrong side, I'm going to go ahead and put on some double-sided tape. Um, this will be outside of our top stitching seam allowance. It'll just help us hold it in place once we go to put this on our constructed main panel. I'm also at this point, again on the right side, I'm going to measure down either three quarters of an inch to one inch. Uh, this is going to be our guideline for when we go to top stitch this in place. So now what we want to do is match that center mark of those connectors to the center mark on the short side of that bottom piece. And we want to put that two and a half inches in from each of the long sides of the main uh, body pieces. I'm just using my two and a half inch ruler here to make sure they go on nice and straight. Again, making sure they are centered 100%. I always measure multiple times just to make sure. Do the exact same thing with the other side. 
Once again, I am checking to make sure it's all centered and I'm good. So now what we want to do is we want to start here, top stitch all the way around and go across where that one inch or three quarter inch line is um, just underneath of our uh, O-rings there to sew these in place. Again, make sure your needle is down before you pivot. Go across, needle down, and continue on your way. Go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side. So once that is done, now we are going to mark where our purse feet are. So I'm measuring one and an eighth of an inch down from the seam where we connected our uh, main panels and marking in the center of those connectors as well, half inch in from the edge of the connectors, making little marks where I will be installing my purse feet. I do have a class on how to install purse feet. If you do need that, it's down below in the description. I'm also gonna go ahead and just mark where I'm gonna place my rivets. Again, I just eyeball it to what I think looks good. And I'm also going to mark where I'm going to put my nameplate. In the pattern, it suggests doing it six inches up from where the bottom panels go on, nice and centered right here. So go ahead and do that off camera here. All right, so I've done that. Now I put my nameplate a little bit lower just because I didn't want it to be in the middle of my butterfly. You can see behind my rivets, I have scraps of Decaville Heavy and I've put some duct tape over top of my prongs. So now we need to do the markings for our magnetic snaps. We are not installing these just yet, but we are going to cut our slits. So make sure that your center marks are definitely centered because we want our magnetic snaps to match up later on when we put them in. Now you are going to measure from that center line three inches in to the left and the right and one and an eighth of an inch down from the top and put a little mark. This is going to be our center mark that we will line up with the center of our washers. So you're going to want to do this on both tops of our main panels, front and back. Again, double check all your measurements because you want them to line up perfectly when we go to put the bag together. Okay, so now I'm going to take my prong and that little circle in the middle of my prongs, I'm lining up with those dots and marking where my prong cuts are. I'm going to go ahead and cut that with my X-Acto knife. And because I'm using a cotton batik fabric, I'm also going to go ahead and go in over those slits with some fray check. Okay, so we have done that on both sides now and we're just going to put the magnetic snaps away for now. We are going to put on our side, so I've marked the centers of the top and the bottom of our side pieces. We're going to put it right sides together, matching up the bottom of the side with the center of the short end of our bottom base piece. Apply three or four clips there to hold it in place. And then bring the top of the side panel up to the top of our main panel. You'll see that the foam should line up nice and perfectly. Clip along there, do the same with the opposite side. And then go ahead and clip the rest together, evenly distributing that fabric around the curve. Once that is done, we're going to take this to the machine and stitch it with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now this is a new angle. I did get some cords that make, uh, make it so I can move my cameras around. Let me know if this is a helpful angle. I would love your feedback.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I just saw that my threads are a little bit stressed out there, so I'm going to go ahead and do a, another line of stitching an eighth of an inch away from that one into the seam allowance. And that just helps make it so you don't have that thread pulling away um, in that seam and gives it a little more strength too. Okay, so once that's done, take a peek, make sure there's no holes and it looks good. Once it looks good, go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side panel. So there we have it. That is our exterior complete. I'm just gonna turn it right side out just to take a, another look to make sure all seams were caught, no puckers were made, and that we look good. And it looks perfect to me. Now we can work on the lining. Okay, so I already went ahead and did a my slip pockets and my zipper pockets. Again, I do these different than the pattern. If you wanna do them the way I do them, go ahead and look down in the description for a class on that. Just make sure you're leaving that zipper pocket bottom open. Okay, so I'm working on the lining panel that has the slip pockets on it. I've marked all of my centers on my base piece, just like we did with the exterior. We're gonna match that center and clip the bottom right sides together with the main lining panel that has the slip pocket on. Now we are gonna do this just a little bit different as we want to leave a turning hole. So I'm only going to sew to about here, about one and a half inches or so in, um, leaving and just stitch between the, the sides here at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and leaving the middle section open. And that's what that looks like. And we're gonna go ahead and do the other side just like we did with the exterior, but we're gonna sew all the way across. Okay, so here we go, we got the opening, perfect. Now we are gonna attach our side panels exactly like we did with the exterior piece with a slight difference. For about two and a half to three inches, we are going from the top, we're gonna to do three eighths of an inch around the curve, a half inch, and then three eighths of an inch once we get to the top. That'll just make it so our lining isn't baggy. Now, once that's done, you're going to see that our lining looks smaller than our exterior. That is exactly what we want. You haven't done anything wrong. Go ahead and turn your exterior piece wrong side out and then take your lining piece and put it right side out. And then we are going to put the lining in inside the exterior right sides together, matching up our center pieces or center markings like so. I like to situate my slip pocket along the front of the outside of the bag because I like to have my zipper pocket at the back. So orientate it the way that you like. Once you have those center marks, main long edge center marks done, go ahead and match up the lining and the exterior side center marks on both sides. Again for the other side. And then next we're going to match up the seams. We are going to want to lay these seams flat just to make less bulk when we go to top stitch, clip those in place, match up the other three seams in the same manner. Once you have all of those seams done, go ahead and clip it all the way around. Now if I was on my flat bed, I would go in from the inside of the, ba the bag with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, but I'm moving over to my cylinder arm. If you have a free arm, you can do it this way as well. And we are going to sew all the way around with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance.
Now those are all sewn together. Looks good. Now go ahead and turn it through the opening that we left in the bottom of the lining panel. I found it came through quite easy. As you guys all know, I suffer from terrible carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel syndrome. So this is the best way for me to turn a bag with a nice big opening. And you can see it comes through quite easy. Once you get it through, make sure you pop out all of those seams along the exterior. And then I like to go ahead and just pull the lining up like this and make sure there's no holes in our seams and everything caught good, which they did. And now for the magic, stuff that lining inside. And what you're gonna do is use the foam. You know how we cut the top off of the foam? So it didn't go all the way to the top. It should fold down over top of that foam about one and a quarter, one and a half inches-ish. Make sure it's even all the way around using that foam as a guide and clipping it in place around that foam. This is just a fun technique I have never done before. It's just really nice to give it that nice kind of um, decorative element to the inside of the lining that brings the exterior to the lining side. I really, really enjoyed this part of this pattern. Okay, so once that's done, again, double check that that's folded over evenly everywhere. I think mine ended up being about one and three eighths of an inch. Then we're gonna go ahead and top stitch that all the way around. All right, now it's time to install those magnetic snaps. I thought this was gonna be super hard, but it was super easy. So I'm also going to be backing my prongs with scraps of Decaval Heavy, which I have put slits in already. So you're gonna reach in through that opening in the bag, put in your magnetic snaps. I did two, the female snaps on the back and the male snaps on the front. Once you get it through that hole, put your um, decorative or Decaval Heavy there, put on the prongs or the washers, I'm just using the edge of my table to close those up. And then I like to give those prongs a good bang with my mallet just to make sure they're nice and secure and back those prongs with some duct tape or Gorilla Tape for extra security. Do the same for all the, the other three snaps. Now that that's done, let's hope and hope that our measurements are right and that our snaps match up. These sides will fold in. Uh, they will eventually get some, uh, I want to call mus muscle memory, I don't know if that's the right word, to hold them in place. My snaps match up perfectly. Yay, so happy. So now we need to close up the bottom of the bag. So you're going to reach in through the opening in the zipper pocket, through that zipper pocket, pull through the opening in the lining, and clip that opening together. This is my go-to for closing all bags. As I see, Mrs. H does it the exact same way. It is such a great way to do it. So you do not have that ridgy line um, at the bottom of the bag, which happens when you don't close it out this way. So once we have this all clipped in place, we're going to start and stop where our stitches start and stopped when we left that opening in and go all the way across with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So here, back stitch all the way across, 
to this side. That is done. Stuff that lining back in. Make sure there's no holes. We're good. And then you should already have your zipper pocket with the raw edges folded in. Clip that together and then top stitch that opening shut. Now I've gone ahead and I've attached my handles if you're doing it the way I did. My opening is closed. My zipper pocket is closed. I can already see that these sides are remembering how to fold in. And look at that. And then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. See, it's a really quick sew. Um, I would say from cut to finish, uh, once you've made a few, maybe three or four hours tops, um, domestic machine friendly, industrial machine friendly. I don't know, it's just such an amazingly great pattern. Again, thank you so much, Samantha, for sharing your talent with us. Anyways, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you would like to support my channel further, you're more than welcome to buy me a coffee. All that is linked down below in the description. Anyways, until the next one, I'll see you again. Bye.